your will to his will. He'll never force you. Never. God the Father did not force his son. And Jesus came right up to the very shadow of the cross. Remember something. Jesus, the son of the living God, but remember when he was in the flesh, he was as much man as though he were not God. Know that. I do not believe for one minute that Jesus wanted to die. I don't believe it. I don't, I don't believe it. Of himself. And yet of being as much man as though he were not God. He had a will separate and apart from the will of God the Father. And that will was not surrendered until he came right to the very shadow of the cross. Right to the very point of And he said, nevertheless, not to my will, but thy be done. And had he not surrendered his will to the will of the Father, believe me of a truth, redemption's plan never would have been perfect. You and I would never have had life eternal. You and I would never have had the privilege of being heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ Jesus. For me to tell you that it's easy to surrender, I wouldn't. I'd like to take your face in my hands and say to you, it isn't easy what I'm saying to you isn't easy. And I'd look you directly in the face and say it isn't easy. But I plead with you, I will get down on my hands and knees and plead with you. Surrender that will of yours. Surrender it. You may aspire to great things and say, look what I can be. Look at my potentialities. I can be the world's greatest. The crowd will applaud. So temporary. It's all so empty when you realize how fickle people are, how short life is. The price is too great, really. I've weighed it all. And I made my choice. And my choice by choice I have chosen his will. And I The surrender of the physical body. I'm talking about something. I'm talking about something that's real. I'm talking about something. I have chosen. It's my choice. I have chosen. To surrender my body as a living sacrifice. 
praying it shall be acceptable unto him, a living sacrifice, filled with the Holy Spirit, being led of the Holy Ghost. It's by choice. I wasn't very old. I'm not quite sure how old. Less than ten years of age. <coughs> At our house Monday morning, Mama always washed. Always. You've come from a home like that, too. Tuesday was ironing day, no matter what happened. You've come from a home like that, too. We had a laundry stove in the basement. And how often I've seen my mother. She's always boiled the white sheets and the pillowcases. One Monday morning, she had the boiler on the laundry stove in the basement. When a telephone call came and a relative was very ill, and they sent for Mama and said, would you please come quickly? And Mama said to me, now, Catherine, I'll be back. Don't touch anything. It was the wrong thing to say. But I'll be back just as quickly as I can. And after Mama was gone, I thought, I'll surprise her. I'll do the washing. I'll do the whole thing. I'll do everything. And when she comes back, she'll be tired. She'll be so surprised. She'll be so surprised. And I went down the basement. The boiler was full of water with the soap chips in it. I put the sheets in it. I got them out. I put the pillow slips in it. I boiled them, and when they were through, I boiled everything in sight. I boil the woolens. <laughs> I boil the colored clothes. <coughs> I boil them all. And then I remember my excitement when it was all over with my excitement was so great. I thought, won't she be surprised? I could never tell you the thrill on the inside. I could never, I could never begin to tell you how I felt. I could never tell you. We always hung our clothes out on the clothesline, you know. And the box of that clothesline it were a little too high for me. And I went in the kitchen, got the kitchen chair, and and uh, would stand on the kitchen chair to pin some of the. I thought some of them were looking a little strange, and I I, I pinned them on. And then when they were all dry, I got their clothes basket out. You'll never know how, to this day, what I'm talking about you. I, I, I can still feel the excitement. The excitement on the inside of me. Mama would be so happy. Mama would be so thrilled. I did the washing. When she'd come home, she'd find it all done. Four o'clock came, five o'clock came, Mama didn't come home. It was late and I didn't go to bed. I waited. I had to see her face when she saw what I had done. <laughs> and I 
had all the clothes, they were all dry, had them all in the wash basket. I had them in the kitchen, so the first thing she would see when she'd come home was surprise, surprise. I shall never forget, she'd been in the hospital all that day. So weary, worried, probably nothing to eat. And she came through that kitchen door. I'll never forget the look on her face. I'll never. She walked in and she looked at that clothes basket and she saw the expensive things that I had ruined. There was a little chalet coat. It was expensive. It was especially made from Kansas City. I had boiled it. It had shrunk to nothing. Some of her best things. I shall never forget her face. She stood there for just a moment. Looked at those things. And then she looked up at me. And she saw my face. I think those are the hardest words that my mother ever had to utter when she said, you did a good job. <laughs> I've often wondered what I'm going to say when I see Jesus for the very first time, no one in the whole world knows how much I love him. No one. No one knows. I would live on bread and water and work just as hard as I'm working today. If I didn't get a copper cent, if I didn't get a penny, if I had to hitchhike instead of ride, he knows my heart. I started out in Idaho on five cent rolls and sleeping in a turkey house. I'll go back again to the turkey house. I'll go back again to just enough substance to keep my body going. And I'll work just as hard. I've given my life. It is hasn't been for six months, or a year, or five years, or ten years. Yet never having seen him, and yet loving him enough to have given my life to him. I often wondered if in that moment, when I see him for the very first time, and I look upon his face, and it's Jesus. It is Jesus. And there he stands. Jesus. I know exactly what I'll say. I know exactly. He 
if he doesn't know it now, he never will. I won't have to wait till then to tell him. But love is something you do. And you keep doing. But when I see him, I'll say just two words. I tried. I tried. <coughs> In many things I've been so wrong. Boiled some things when they should not have been boiled. I've used too harsh a detergent and some things where I should not have. I've spoken words when I should have kept my mouth shut. made decisions when if only I had waited. I acted in haste when there should have been patience. Standing before you in this chapel this morning, if only I knew right now if only I could know what he really had in for me in many instances. But I ruined the washing. Not intentionally. So help me God if he knows my heart. I didn't do it intentionally. I wouldn't have grieved him. I wouldn't have gone contrary to his will for a title deed to the whole world. I did it out of ignorance. I did it because I was stupid. I did it because I didn't wait for his leading. I did it sometimes because I listened to other voices instead of his voice. But there was never a time when I didn't want more than anything else for him to keep me as the apple of his eye. And as long as I know that underneath are those everlasting arms, I can face anything. I can face all the devils of hell. I can face the whole world. And it never faces me. Never. Never. Why can I stand with my shoulders square? Why can I speak with boldness? Where do I get my courage? From whom do I get my spiritual strength? From the one whom I love more than life itself. One of these days, I will have preached my last sermon. One of these days, I will have prayed for the last person who comes into a miracle service. One of these days, my old heart will take its last meat. A 
the world will call me a fool for having given my life for one whom I have not seen. But in that day, in spite of my failures, in spite of my mistakes, I will stand before him blameless, blameless. He shall present me before the Father blameless. know what that means. Blameless not because of my righteousness. Not because of anything that I have done. But I'll stand blameless through the perfection and the righteousness of his only begotten Son, my Lord and my Savior. That's what he died for. Eyes closed. Every eye closed. I told you what Catherine Kuhlman is really like. Misunderstood by thousands. Misunderstood. But it doesn't matter. really doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. The only thing that's real, that really matters is my relationship with him. what I want most. I have but one life. That's all. And it passes very quickly. Young people, it passes very quickly. You're young today. Many of you in your teens. And you feel there's a whole world out there. And you feel it is forever. You feel it's forever. But I tell you, it passes very quickly. The hours pass quickly. The days pass quickly. The months pass quickly. The years pass quickly. So quickly until one day you're startled and you'll say, where have the years gone? Where have they gone? Where have they gone? What has happened to those years? And give, give anything in the world if you could turn the clock back. But you can't. And there's just you. Just you. Your life. Your life. You've been a part of living. What do you want most? Only you can make that choice. Only you. Only you. The 
real you. Papa wanted money. Once he had it. But all that he could leave his daughter when he was killed. A child he loved more than life itself was a one dollar bill. There are those who played to the crowd. And they heard the applause. And a woman in the newspaper this morning, at the very height of her writing career, at the very peak of it all, at the age of 53, died of cancer. What do you want most? What do you? What do you? I ask you, he asks you. Maybe you haven't thought of it seriously. You've been so determined to get it. You've been so determined to get it. Haven't really cared or thought too much about it. But one of these days, when it's all over with, can you stand in his presence knowing? You've been kept with the apple of his eye. That you've been covered with his wings. Oh, beloved. To be in a position where you're completely hidden under his wings. is so secure. You feel so secure. There's such security. I can't tell you what that feeling is. You become a very secure person. There can be no insecurity. I tell you the God's truth. There can be no insecurity. And this is a very insecure generation. There never was a generation that was so insecure. And some of you young people are so insecure and some of you are not so young. If you really face reality, there's such insecurity there. Maybe you'll not be able to admit it yourself, but it, there's such insecurity there. That's the reason you have to lean so heavily on others. But oh, the only person who is a really secure person is the one who knows that underneath are his everlasting arms and you're covered with his wings hide me under the shadow of thy wings the evil one cannot touch me. The waters shall not overflow. Covered with thy wings, I'm protected. I'm not afraid. I'm no longer an insecure person.
I made the choice. I made my choice. I wish this morning I'd give anything in the world this morning. I could make the same choice for each of you. I'd give anything. I wish I could take you by the hand and present you before the Father and say to him, I've made the choice for this one. I have made the choice. I choose that this life shall be wholly used for you at any cost, at any price. Nothing from here on out will matter more than just to be the apple of thine eye. With your smile, dead to self. Two wheels having become as one. But I can't go any further with you than I've gone in bearing my own soul. I've never done this before. Never. But in so doing, I can just help one of you young people. Just one of you. The choice that you make can shake the world for God. If I can have just one of you make the same choice that I made. Just one of you and that can be the most unlikely person in this place. Just one of you. If what I have said and bury my soul will help you to make that choice. You may be the one who will literally shake the world for God. No urging. No begging. It's something you're not compelled to do. It's something that no one can influence you to do. No amount of talking. No amount of argument. No scolding. No doctrine. It isn't much learning. Perhaps not even the word. And it's something even the master won't force you to do. He hasn't forced me to do one thing. It's my choice. And you make the choice. If you'll make that choice, little do you know what he'll do for you. I want you to come and stand right here, not more than five minutes. And then you'll be ready to go back to your class again. And I'll pray for you. Come on. I make that choice, Catherine Coolman. I make that choice. I make that choice, Catherine Coolman. I will make that choice. Coming down here in this hour with all of heaven bending low, little do you know, walking down these steps, little do you know, little do you know. God's will for you, little do you know. From among you, 
There will be those who shake the nations for God. And I believe that, I believe that, I believe that. I believe that. You're in a position, in the position, where he's training you for that very thing. That's why you're here. But it takes more than just the training. It takes more than just the mental training. It takes a consecration. You've got to make the choice. Wonderful Jesus is the power of the Holy Ghost. From a man, oh, and the power of the Holy Ghost, and the power of the Holy Spirit has come upon him. Standing right here, standing right here in this chapel this morning, standing right here. Little do these young people know the potentialities. Little do they know the perfect will of God. Little do they know. It's not an hour for compromise. It's not. It's not an hour to live for self. It's not an hour for selfish motives. It's not an hour. It's not an hour. It's not an hour for that. It's a day to be used of the master. It's an hour to be used of the master. It's an hour. It's an hour to be used of him. It's an hour, please, with the Holy Spirit upon you. It's all over this place. It's all over this auditorium, and they're still coming down. And they're still coming down. So
I believe that every angel in glory is bending low. For out of this gathering this morning, I promise you something. I give you the word of prophecy from out of this group this morning. There will be young people who will shake the nations for God. There are young people standing just now in his holy presence who will literally shake the nations for God. I promise you, I have called you forth out of the I worship. I worship you. I worship you. It's left with you. He'll take, he'll use what you yield unto him. You make the choice. President Roberts, where are you? I pray that not one of these students shall leave this place this Monday morning. Not one shall leave this place the same person they were when they entered. May there be the glory and the blessing upon you. My Lord and my God, he is one who's been obedient to you. He knows better than anyone in this chapel this morning what we were talking about. He knows. But it's still just the beginning for him. It's still only the beginning for us, for all of us. Take it, President. Amen. 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 Somewhere, somehow, the Holy Spirit is going to deal with you and you'll know it. That's what she's been saying, that you're going to make a choice. Whether you want to make it or not, you'll, you'll make it one way or the other. And today, Monday, is the day. Today is the day of salvation, is what she's been saying. Not tomorrow, and not the day after, but today. She's saying now, she's saying it now in the spirit, now. It doesn't take you forever to make the decision, God, I submit my will to you. To you, God. I, I may stumble and make mistakes and all that now. But I'm going to get up if I stumble. Because I've submitted my will. My will is yours, God. If I, if I'm in a if I'm a religion major, I'm going to submit my will. If I'm an athlete, I'm going to submit my will to God. If I'm a, in the music department, I'm going to submit my will to God. If I'm a coach or a teacher or a president or a dean, I'm going to submit my will to God. And I'm going to do it today. Somewhere, somehow on this campus, all over it, anywhere on it, that's what she's saying of the Spirit. Today is the day. Submit my will, mine, to God. Ms. Kuhlman, is that what you've been saying in the Spirit? Exactly. Now, 
Tomorrow may be too late. Now. This moment. This moment. This very moment. Can it be done as they walk or as they walk on the campus or sit in a classroom or go to a dorm room or, or at the dining table or what? And after you have done it, I came to that moment of decision. And when I reached that decision, it was definite. The most definite thing that I have ever done in my life. And I want you to know something. I have never turned back once. I have never for one minute turn back and don't you Amen then go in the name of the Lord go to your classes somehow some way today make that decision I submit my will to God the faculty will go, will go immediately to the mezzanine, and I'll, Ms. Kuhlman, I'll meet you there in just a few moments. Remember to...